While the fighting of our generation's war is nearing an end, there is work still left to be done. I think my sense of the region, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, and the other areas around it, is one of engagement. I think that there will be a tendency and a temptation for the United States and other parts of the West to pull away and not stay uh, present on the ground or engaged economically or engaged politically. I don't think we need thousands of military forces or to fight a war there, but I don't think we can turn our back. I don't think Afghanistan is a small landlocked country so far away that it doesn't matter. I think the people do matter. And I certainly think that major countries like Pakistan and Iran matter. And so I think we need to look at the area not as a series of separate entities, but as the mosaic of which uh, an entire future of the region will play out as the interactions between people. And we need to be a part of it. I think taking care of veterans is a responsibility. If you think about the young men and women that represent America, they come from our towns, they come from our cities, they come from our farms. And they go forward because we ask them to. We, the nation, ask them to, to act on behalf of us. When they come home, we're just as responsible for them when they come home as we are when they left. Their duty's not over and our responsibility's not over. I think the most important thing we can do is let them reintegrate back in the community. Many have spent four, eight, or longer years gone. They haven't established business contacts. They haven't sunk the same roots that maybe other people, their peers, might have. I think the ability to help them get into those connections, into our churches, into our social gatherings, all the things that give you the weave of life that allows you to build a career, allows you to have a family, allows you to have the richness that we love about life. That's what I think is important. It's not a big government program that's going to help this. It's going to be America pulling them back into our communities and our hearts. People typically say, what leader do you look to most in a military leader? And if I look to a military leader, one that comes to mind to me is Ulysses Grant. He, uh, he was a modest man who in a very difficult time great, showed great personal strength. At the same time, I think if I really look at a sweep of someone who made a big change, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he led a campaign that had a very disciplined strategy for many years. He was jailed 12 times. He ultimately paid the price by being murdered, by accepting the cost of leadership. And we tend to look back at it now and we tend to, to shove it together into a small period and think that the civil rights movement happened over a, a very busy summer. It didn't, it happened over a generation. And it was an entire generation of people who were willing to sacrifice, commit, take all kinds of risks and take all kinds of criticism, but they didn't waver. And so it's leadership like that that I admire very deeply.